8 Bad Game-Based Movies That Are Pure Guilty Pleasures The video game-based movies have an unfortunate legacy, and over the years, there have been numerous failed attempts to recreate the magic of a game into a film. The blame for the failure should go to the greedy filmmakers who just try to use the popularity of a gaming brand to manipulate the fans into buying tickets. They never really wanted to make a good movie, they just wanted to invest low, create subpar content, and slap a sticker of a popular game on a film, and that's it. Back in the day when we were kids, we didn't understand the intricacies of cinema and financial politics of filmmaking. For us, these were nothing more than entertaining media based on our favorite games, and a lot of us enjoyed them. Even though a myriad of these movies were really bad, we were able to find the silver lining in them, and some of these definitely hold a special place in our hearts. That's why they appear cheesy to us now, but we still enjoy them. Today, we're going to list down 8 bad game-based movies that would take you to the good old days when Rotten Tomatoes didn't decide which movie is good or bad for you. I can see you. No, you can't. Double Dragon 1994. Let's begin the show with one of the iconic disasters in the world of video game adaptions. Double Dragon tells the story of a post-apocalyptic California where two brothers are trained in martial arts by an individual who took care of them since their parents died. This individual named Satori suddenly finds herself attacked by an evil overlord who wishes to possess her precious medallion. The brothers are then tasked with the protection of the mystical dragon medallion that she owns. The movie bombed at the box office, and it is slated as one of the lowest rated video game adaptions. You would be surprised to know that Robert Patrick is the main baddie in the film. This movie was certainly made for the kids, and it feels like we are watching a Power Rangers instead of Double Dragon. The fight scenes are decent, and the acting is average. Young Alyssa Milano is in the film, and she looks gorgeous as ever. Mark Dacascus and Scott Wolf play the Lee brothers, and they did their best with what was given to them. The use of clever special effects boosts the movie, and the overall campy environment will never let you forget that this movie is based on an 8-bit video game. Come on! Super Mario Bros. 1993 those who have played the game Mario are probably aware that the storyline is not exactly tailor-made for a movie. The story for the film is about two plumbers, Luigi and Mario, who discover that a parallel world is filled with descendants of dinosaurs who seek to rule this world. They not only try to stop this catastrophe, but also free the princess from the evil king. Mario might save the princess, but the makers could not really save the film. Super Mario Bros. has a lot of good actors. Bob Haskins plays Mario, John Leguizamo as Luigi, and Dennis Hopper played King Koopa. Creators decided to invest heavily in this film. The use of VFX appears well-funded, the sets are massive, and appear expensive. If you are getting into this movie, do not forget that it is nothing like the game. It's an industrious-looking dystopian world. The Goombas are vicious dinosaur-like people, Mario and Luigi use gadgets to jump higher, and King Koopa is a humanoid. Alan Silvestri's music is fantastic and enhances the emotion, action, and thrill in the film. The movie has a lot of funny game references that were cleverly inculcated. If this film wasn't called Super Mario Bros, the critics wouldn't have been so harsh on it, because it is a well-made piece of entertainment. Street Fighter 1994 Street Fighter may have been a widely popular game, but the same could not be said about the movie adaption. It did enjoy an initial box office success, but was soon bombarded with criticism by the fans and critics alike. The story of Street Fighter revolved around Colonel Guile, who has to save the world from the evil General M. Bison. The latter has plans to use genetic super soldiers and conquer the world, and it has to be stopped by Guile, with the help of his fellow Street Fighters Ken, Ryu, Chun-Li, Kami, and others. It's still better than some other video game adaptions, and Jean-Claude Van Damme puts on a brilliant act as Colonel Guile. Raoul Julia does an exemplary job as M. Bison, but the character was written in such a one-dimensional way, even the greatest actor had trouble making it credible. Even after the script-related problems, Street Fighter is not a bad movie. It's a decent 90s action film with some satisfying game references. The film was a financial success, and there were plans to create a second one, and they wanted to center it around Van Damme once again, but he refused to reprise the role. Doom 2000 
2005. The saving grace for this video game adaption is that it has a starry cast with the likes of Dwayne Johnson, Carl Urban, and Rosamund Pike. In the movie, some space marines embark upon a rescue mission on Mars, where a mass murderer was on a rampage. He was injected with alien DNA, and the chromosomes could infect humans easily and mutate them. Can the marines save humanity of the trouble? Sure they can, but the filmmakers unfortunately could not save it from being a disaster at the box office. The solid action sequences, however, are a treat to watch with a rock in action. Overall, with the special effects and some intelligent direction, the movie is watchable. It may not be a masterpiece, but some really cool moments like when the film completely turns into a first-person shooter mode near the end would definitely delight the fans. <laughs> DOA Dead or Alive 2006 Sometimes a game has too much of a monotonous premise to be made into a movie. Unfortunately, that did not occur to the makers of DOA Dead or Alive. When four martial arts combatants and fighters are invited to an island to battle for a $10 million prize, little do they know that there are deep, dark secrets lurking beneath what catches the eye. The four female fighters who were initially pitted against each other later form a coalition to fight the evil forces on the island. This movie is brainless entertainment, and if you do not let yourself be bothered by the lack of logic, you could actually enjoy the film. It has fantastic martial arts scenes, attractive ladies, excellent recreation of game moments, and even the acting is not so bad. If you're down with two, three beers, you might even leave a positive review on IMDb. Bonus tip, it also has a sexy beach volleyball scene, just like the game. Blood Rain 2005 Speaking of box office fails, this movie deserves a special mention as it failed to recover even one-eighth of the budget. The story is about a breed of humans and vampires known as Rain. Their king, Kagan, has the motive of wiping out the human race. At least then, we wouldn't have to see this film. Rain, however, turns against the king after he rapes and murders her mother, and she joins hands with a group of warriors to defeat his purpose. The only silver lining in this movie are the action scenes and, and acting delivered by Michelle Rodriguez and Kristana Loken. Both these ladies tried their best. The stunts and action sequences are decent, but the way they were edited destroyed a lot of good moments. Even after all of this, we would still say that the movie is not as bad as it appears in the trailer. If you like the game, we would recommend you to watch this. There is a big chance you might enjoy it. I can't! If you can still breathe, you can still fight. You're only beaten when you decide. Again! Tekken 2009 Tekken is a simple story of revenge based on a popular video game. The story narrates the tale of the determined Jin, who seeks revenge against the Tekken for killing his mother. He takes part in a tournament to actualize his revenge, and the rest of the movie is all about him accomplishing his mission. To be fair, the bar is not set high when it comes to video game adaptions, and Tekken is definitely above average in this regard. For a change, the characters have been carefully developed in this movie, and it has a decent plotline. While Tekken does not exactly steal the show, it is undoubtedly a one-time watch for the breathtaking fighting scenes. There are a lot of game references in this movie, but it appears that they didn't use them properly. If you are someone who loved 1995's Mortal Kombat movie, there is a huge chance you might even like this one. Hitman 2007 The raging success of the game Hitman ensured that the movie enjoyed substantial commercial success. The story of the film, however, did have plenty of loose ends, and it was like someone never edited the movie properly. The story is that of Agent 47, a hitman who kills as his profession. There is one mistake on his part where he ends up killing a lookalike of his target. Before you know it, he is being pursued by both Russian intelligence and Interpol. He soon realizes that it is a part of political conspiracy and that he is determined to get to the bottom of things. The incoherent plot destroys the potential of the film to become a better version of itself. Timothy Olymphant does a good job as Agent 47, much better than the guy who played the character in the 2015 reboot. 
The gunfights are satisfying and young Olga Kralienko's sultry presence is a delight for eyes. This movie was made with a decent budget and everything appears high quality most of the time. This is not the movie that would make you have prolonged discussion about its plot over the internet, but if you are looking for a movie that has great gunfights, enjoyable plots, and boobies, please watch this.